Hello and welcome to Free Kick with me Niraj Prabhu. Japan gave a amazing performance uh, last night in their pre-quarter finals against the pre-tournament favorites and world number 3 side Belgium. And unfortunately, uh, the boys from the land of uh, rising sun are knocked out uh, with a 3-2 uh, victory for Belgium taking the Red Devils into the quarterfinals where they meet Brazil who uh, got the better of uh, Mexico yet again uh, by two goals to nail former India striker Francis de Souza and defender Denzel Franco here ready uh, with their analysis of uh, the program. Let me first uh, go to Denzel, uh, fan of Brazil. I'm sure you're relieved that uh, Brazil are still alive in the competition and also have put up a really good performance. Yes, I'm very happy that uh, first of all Brazil has um, uh, overcome the hurdle of all the big teams uh, suffering of late. So I'm very happy about it, and uh, they have progressed to the semi-finals. Uh, congratulations to Brazil and the quarterfinals. All, uh, to, to the quarterfinals, and most importantly, Neymar coming out from the biggest uh, uh, crisis, you could say that you know he was going through all these uh, uh, months. He's overcome and he scored some uh, scored a goal and, and an assist for Brazil. Right, uh, Francis. Uh, overall, uh, <laughs> Brazil. Uh, what do you think? How do you rate their performance? Are they right up there? Do you see a champion material in this Brazil team? Yes, I like I said before, uh, Neeraj, uh, they, they have individual flair. They can turn the match at any point of time. And individual ability cannot be replaced. You have Neymar there who is coming good. He is getting better with every game. Uh, there is a lot of pressure on Neymar because there is a lot of expectations. Yes. From all over the world now with Messi and Ronaldo gone. You see, he is only the star on the horizon now. And he has to shine, and and he rightly so. He is he scored the goal and he got he created the other one. So it is remarkable. But what is interesting for me with the Brazilian team is that the good defense came good yesterday. Right. Uh, Silva was uh, outstanding. Uh, they they were able to have a lot of mobility in the in the, in in the midfield uh, and in the attack. And uh, you could see Neymar even falling down to assist this team. Shows how much uh, this. Quarter final, uh, this uh, pre quarter final meant for them, uh, and very rightly so. They they translated all this determination in, into energy and got those goals for a right, rightly deserved victory. Right. Uh, Brazil uh, couldn't breach the rivals uh, Citadel until in the second half. The first half was goalless. What do you put down uh, that to? I think uh, Brazil benefited only with the open game that Mexico played. They didn't resort to any defensive tactics. Uh, the, they were through flowing and they were going ahead, uh, trying to score goals. Uh, they created a few chances, but uh, Zano and company couldn't create them. But uh, you, if you see that uh, Mexico is always a fighting team, uh, they, they will not leave uh, any ch uh, chances or anything, any effort uh, which is going to give them uh, uh, a bad result. They have been at this stage for a number of times. They wanted to cross this hurdle very badly. It's been a mental block for them. They have never qualified for the quarters. So I think they wanted to change the records this time. And that's why the determination. That's why they were more uh, effective in the first half, uh, trying to go all out to counter Bra Brazil's attacking tactics. Right. Uh, Denzel, uh, first half goalless, uh, Neymar seemed to take a little bit of time to get settled into the groove. Uh, uh, when uh, the match started and uh, it seemed that he slowly grew in confidence and the result we saw was in the second half. Yeah, as, you say, as you know, Sir also said it that you know, in the first half, Mexico really played it tight and uh, they, they, they wanted to achieve something out of, out of the game and they really played good football yes. uh, in the defence line and uh, that was making it difficult for Neymar to actually penetrate. But I, I feel as the game progressed, uh, Neymar was really doing a good job in the second half and the results are there to see. Mm. Even uh, Villian uh, played a good supporting role yesterday, the best so far in the tournament for Villian as well? Yes, of course. Uh, in fact, the whole team, they yes. have combined well as a oil machine. Um, uh, they've been doing it for the last uh, so many games and they did it perfect in the last match. Mm -hmm. uh, coming to the pace of the match, uh, it didn't look as uh, uh, a flying start for any team. It, it was played at not that great pace. So, was it normal for a Brazil game to play at that uh, pace? There is always assessment by the players, the coaches. They are very careful 
how, uh, how to go about it. The planning is always there uh, mm -hmm. that you assess your opponents on a given day. And I, like I always say, uh, you are good as you are on, the, on that game day. Uh, and I think right, very rightly so. Uh, Brazil did not go all out. They saved their energy for a later, later time. But in the meantime, I think the defense stood like a rock yes. and uh, stopped the attacks of uh, Mexico. Even when Mexico had considered the goals, they were again at, uh, uh, in the attacking third of Brazil, trying to put pressure and get that goal. Right. You know? So, I think uh, Brazil did very well. And like you said, uh, William was the hero of the match. In yes. fact, for me, because you see his mobility, he sees running with the ball and see the goal that he created. Uh, for uh, uh, for Neymar, yes. he, he, he of the block he was very quick, and no no reaction from the Mexican defenders, mm. and he put the ball very rightly for Neymar to slide and score goals. So William for me was the hero of the match yesterday, and and that gives them extra power into the attack with William coming good or Fermino coming good, it reduces the burden on Neymar to deliver. Right. The attack is doing a good job. Yes, yes uh, they did miss a lot of chances yesterday, but then I, I feel that, you know, they, they got it uh, right in the second half. And according to me, uh, what I feel is they will progress in the uh, future matches uh, with what form they have shot in the second half. Right. Uh, Mexico uh, are now out in the pre-quarter finals again, the seventh consecutive World Cup that they are exiting at the round of 16. Is it due to uh, you called a mental block? Is it uh, their temperament that needs to be you know looked into? Yeah, I mean now I think we have teams who have younger players in the age group of 25 and 26. Uh, some of them have never come to this world stage. Yes. Uh, they are coming there for the first time. And as the competition progresses and as you reach the quarters and semi, I think the temperament will be the major factor. When you have teams playing against Brazil and uh, um, Belgium, mm. you know, th there are individual players who can change the complexion of the matches. And how good they come and how good support they get from these younger players will be a fact, very, very big factor. Because I feel even England, uh, who has uh, the youngest team in the competition now, on an average, uh, I think it's a big, big, big ask for them to deliver. Because they have been playing in the local leagues, but uh, World Cup is a different stage altogether. Right. And uh, their opponents, though they are not uh, renowned opponents, uh, Sweden, uh, Sweden and Switzerland, uh, and even Colombia, they can give them a run for their money. Uh, but I think ultimately, young power will 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 succeed. Right. And if you have seen this happening even to Brazil, the younger boys, Jesus, see his work rate. He is a tremendous working player and in fact, if you ask me, Fermino is a better player uh, for conversion, but uh, his work rate is poor. So, the coach had decided that initially he starts with Jesus, uses the work rate, tires the opponent, confuses the opponent with his mobility hmm. and then puts in Fermino, comes there at the right time to give the advantage to him. So, that is all part of the planning for the Yeah, I think it is a strategy. The, the curse of the fifth game continues for Mexico, quite puzzling their country qualifying for uh, World Cup uh, consecutively, at least in the last seven uh, uh, World Cups that have been held, but going out at the same stage of the first uh, knockout uh, match, so it is quite baffling. Anyways, let us now turn our attention to the next game uh, last night, which was played between uh, world number three, Belgium and uh, FIFA ranked uh, 61 and that is Japan and what a game this turned out to be. Japan matched uh, Belgium move to move especially in the second half and really almost uh, rocked the party of the Red Devils but then Belgium are a tremendous side and we all knew that and they pulled out something special and won the match with the, almost the last kick of uh, the game. Tremendous encounter there, uh, Francis. A game that, uh, you know, could uh, drive all your sleep uh, away and make you uh, watch that compelling encounter late into the night. Awesome I, game. I am very proud of the Asian team. Make me proud also. The Samurais really played their hearts out. Uh, they rightly deserved to be there in the quarters. If, you know, unfortunately, uh, it's only it's only those two goals that woke up uh, Belgium. I think that rattled the Belgium very badly, and they realized what was happening to them. Uh, the last time it was the same story, and they didn't want a repeat of what happened last World Cup. Mm. And and individual brilliance again, to to say has surfaced again. Uh, very 
famous players like De Bruyne, Lukaku, you know, coming good at the right time for them. And even the substitution, Fellini, doing very wonderful job. Chadley. Ch and Chadley also. And uh, God gifted goal from Burton. Oh, you know, Watangan. Watangan. So, uh, that is something just unimaginable that Absolutely. the ball will go there. And goalkeeper was really helpless. So, I think this, the Japanese have gone out with their heads high. They, ha they have uh, kept their uh, prestige and their name uh, very high. And I think it will boost their confidence, not only for Japan, but for the rest of the Asian countries. Right. Uh, Danzil uh, having taken a two-goal lead in a knockout uh, game and that too in the second half. How could a team lose that uh, uh, advantage? Yeah, uh, it was first of all a proud moment for as I said, proud moment for we Asians. Uh, Japan do, uh, doing a great job over there with a 2-0 lead and uh, unbelievable comeback by Belgium. But uh, uh, somehow, uh, somewhere down the line, I feel that you know, uh, although Japan took a lead, uh, what made them uh, lose this uh, 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 lead, I don't understand. But uh, they should have kept up to the to the uh, defense line intact as well. You mean they, they should have shut the shop and tried to preserve that lead? I, I'm not saying attack is the best form of defence. I, right. I would rather go with that. But then they had 2-0 lead and they still showed that they were still attacking the Absolutely. game. Absolutely. Yeah, they, they were, were still trying doing, to match they, the they, they were still doing everything that was right. But at the same time, they could have given a little uh, mm. importance to the defence line. If you see the third goal which uh, Lukaku uh, has uh, given a deaf uh, uh, thing. The to, winning goal. The winning goal. Belgium. The defence was already in attack. They should have been real calm. Mm -hmm. It was in the extra time. Absolutely. Stoppage time. Stoppage Fourth time. minute yeah, of So, stoppage. maybe this could have been avoided. Such situations. Falani, great head over there. And the, the first goal what they scored... Uh, Watangan scored. Watangan scored was uh, uh, something uh, extraordinary. I, I just can't imagine that uh, there will be such goals scored in the future. Can but you all practice such goals in the practice? You know, <laughs> even, even if, I, if I get hundreds of those balls, it's not possible. But it is one of a kind. Unbelievable. And there was a misunderstanding, I feel, between the goalkeeper mm. and the defence. That, you know, there was a defender close to that line, goal right. line. But he must have kept himself a little lower because... If he had to clash with the goalkeeper, then that could have been a controversy. goalkeeper was back paddling. Yes, uh, you know, so maybe he gave that space to the goalkeeper to uh, uh, judge that ball and uh, uh, clear it. Mm -hmm. But that didn't happen. Uh, looking at that goal in another way, uh, that was a tremendous, extraordinary goal. So, do you think that level of that goal sparked the comeback from Belgium? It galvanized the team. Something extraordinary happening in such a time that makes the team uh, give more effort and uh, complete that comeback. Yes, yes exactly. They, they got a boost. I mean, from that goal, they got a uh, thing that, okay, we, we have done this. We need to pump in more uh, attack on uh, Japan. And that's exactly what they started doing. Hazard doing a very good job on the left side, giving some good crosses, low crosses, high crosses. And Fellani scoring the second goal. And the third goal, uh, a good counter-attack. You know, Tremendous. That, that uh, goalkeeper rolled the ball into the path of Kevin in a very early role yes. and then he took it forward. Yes. Sensational. But as uh, Denzel said, should Japan have shut the shop and tried to preserve their lead rather than going and showing that uh, bravado uh, that they can match Belgium toe-to-toe -to -toe till the end of the game? In fact, uh, if, if you have not planned the strategy, uh, if you have not uh, done pre-thinking before the match, uh, <laughs> how to go about your uh, job mm. once you get the lead or you are in a two-goal lead, I, I think it becomes difficult. Uh, and uh, most of the teams would prefer to keep the ball with them and try to get the maximum possession, uh, thus depriving the opponents uh, to get control of the match. But uh, as, as uh, he said very rightly, they, they try to put pressure and keep the opponents in their own half. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, of the ball running by Lukaku, Lukaku and the other players uh, uh, gave the advantage to Belgium. And the third goal was a beauty because it was only a three-touch, uh, yes. three-touch uh, goal. And uh, something that happens against the run of play, un unanticipated and unthought of. And uh, if if you if you are lucky on that particular day, it comes good. And I think uh, Belgium had a little bit of luck. Uh, to survive this uh, onslaught by Japan. Right. Uh, Lukaku was uh, dummy, was amazing in the heat of the moment. That decision making was tremendous. But earlier in the game, he had a forgettable night because he missed two really sitters, two uh, great chances in front of the goal. One was in the first half when the ball tangled into his feet and another in the second when he missed an open header. 
So for a striker to have that strong mindset to help the team with such a dummy, uh, how you could explain to us what type of a player Lukaku is. In fact, uh, Neeraj, I feel when you, when you know that you know you have tried some uh, attempts at the goal and you have not succeeded, easy, uh, things easy are not goals. going your way. You know, it, it is it is the wisdom of the player who who is there to set things up for the other players. Because you you realize sometimes in the back of your mind that it is not your day, right. perhaps not your day. And uh, if you see the run by Lukaku, he has created that uh, off the ball run for for the winger to get get the ball a pass from De Bruyne. And secondly, he, he knew that he was not in the position. In normal circumstances, I thought I think he might have tried yes, taking he could a have, shot yes, in the goal. Sure. But then he knows he, he, it is not his day, mm. and very very well he very well aware. That there was the other Chadley, Chadley following him on 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 the le left. So very rightly and very very smartly, he 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 played the dummy and pulled the defender, and Chadley was all there uh, to put the ball into the net. So how important smart thinking, quick thinking comes into picture in a key game like that? Uh, the importance of smart thinking footballer is not lost at all. Yes, I mean, uh, the, the dummy itself shows that how classy player he is and how cool and calm he was, although he's been not having a good game throughout the match. Uh, and uh, he ultimately, I can call him a hero of Belgium Absolutely. because... Uh, the f the goal which uh, he did the dummy was a, a free open uh, thing for Chadley to just uh, get it into the net, but all work was done by Lukaku. A little bit to say so is the unselfishness of yes. Lukaku. Normally the forwards are considered very yes. selfish. If if you have not been on the score sheet, you like to get on the score yes. sheet to c cement your place into the team. I think that was very unselfish of uh, Lukaku. Because I think with his body structure and his ability, he could have turned the ball and shot into the goal. He taken a shot, which might have not resulted in the goal. But unselfishly, he let the ball go to Chadley. So, this performance tells us how strong Belgium are, even their bench, how strong that is with Fellaini and uh, Chadley coming in later in the game. Now, Belgium clash with uh, Brazil and Denzil, my question to you. Are uh, Brazil up to the challenge of the Red Devils? Yes, as a supporter of uh, Brazil, uh, I would say they are up for it. But then, you know, again I say it's it's a matter of 90 minutes and the uh, extra time, whatever adds to it. But then uh, I wouldn't want to uh, make any differences of any teams. As a sportsman, I know till the 90th minute, I cannot assume that, you know, we are the winners. Till the 90th minute, I have to, continue, no matter how uh, leading uh, we are in the, in the game, we need to be calm till the final uh, whistle. So, I, I, I want to watch this match. My whole support is with Brazil. Who do you think is a better team man to man, Brazil or Belgium? Of course, I will go with Brazil. Wonderful. Uh, Francis, uh, what are Brazil's strong points over Belgium and vice versa? You know, I think both, uh, both have exceptional players. Their run off the ball, uh, their, their mobility is fantastic. Uh, they are individually very good, uh, like uh, Neymar, Hazard, De Bruyne. You know, even William, they are individually very good. So, both the team will be fully aware of the abilities and capabilities of these players. They are going to play. They are going to play this match with a lot of pressure on their head, knowing very well they cannot slip up, because any slip up would cost the team very badly. And I think uh, now is the time that you are going to see these players, the real worth of these players. Their, their talent coming to four and how good they are on this stage. Uh, it's, a, it's a matter of who, who can do the best thing on the, on, on the given day. And I think we have very experienced players and players playing for top clubs in the world. I think we, we have a, a cracker of a game. Uh, it's, I think for me, according to me, uh, in this, especially in this group, it's going to be the final number one, final number two and final number three for any game. So, I think uh, Fra France also will have to play Brazil or Belgium. Uh, it's going to be a second if final. If they win against Uruguay. If they win against uh, Uruguay. So, so, I think this group is a very tough group and we, we see cracker of games in this group. What sort of a tempo do, do you think suits Belgium? Is it a high-paced team? Uh, whereas, uh, as compared to Brazil who play at their own pace, uh, will that be a clash of two different type of tempos? You know, Brazil, Brazil has the ability to hold the ball. Individually, players can run with the ball and hold the ball and create, create gaps for the uh, other players. But in that respect, uh, Belgium is a more attacking team. 
so they play more penetrative more penetrative football mm -hmm. they play more intensive uh, <coughs> attacking football but uh, the ability of some players is wonderful but uh, brazil in every every position they have players who can hold on to the ball slow down the game create the uh, the movement and that's going to be the most uh, dangerous weapon of brazil to control the tempo of the game control the tempo of the game and create those chances by their mobility and inter by interaction holding the yeah, ball interchanging position and holding on the ball so tactically that game should be the pick of the contest so far in the world cup tactically yes, yes. i mean i feel uh, the way sir said it you know brazil has the capacity of uh, knowing when to hold it when to attack and they have individual players who can uh, run at a particular time right. when you need to run and when you, when you need to keep it on hold that's more most important so that sets up a really really uh, cracking contest when brazil will uh, clash with belgium in that uh, quarter final right then let's now uh, have a look at the games tonight uh, which are between uh, sweden and switzerland to start with at 7:30 pm and that will be followed by uh expectedly engaging encounter with uh, england the young england side who are one of the youngest teams uh, at 26 uh, age average age alongside france and obviously nigeria were also 26 years average so they'll take on uh, colombia the south american uh, team that we also at the last world cup uh, playing really really sensational football with james rodriguez in full flow but uh, unfortunately Ames Rodriguez uh, is uh, said to be injured but you never know he may play tonight so a uh, cracking contest especially the England Colombia match up would keep uh, all of us going awake here yeah definitely because colombia is just like what mexico does to you they 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 go all out to get the victory for you they play free flowing football and i think england also with young talent and uh, very promising this uh, world cup uh, i think it's going to be a cracker of a match Uh, but uh, if hamis plays uh, is fit enough to play this match i think he that's that's going to make a big difference for colombia otherwise if without hamis i think they are always uh, at a disadvantage because the the whole burden will fall on falcao and falcao has not been coming so good uh, as as i have seen him in this competition without support from without hamis, support from hamis yeah mm -hmm. and uh, definitely when you have two good players playing in the attacking line uh even the england defense will be will be uh, wondering actually how to go about marking both these players because both these players are fantastic players and if falcao comes good now i think uh, colombia will have a good result but i think uh, with the confidence that uh, england has built up i think england should win this match in the uh, first match of course uh, switzerland will uh, face uh, sweden so we never know what to expect from that game because switzerland have shown they can uh, really uh, pull through and uh, come up with amazing goals like how uh, shakiri and shaka delivered against serbia whereas uh, sweden we all know how difficult they were for germany to overcome so uh, quick thoughts on the sweden switzerland match Uh, i think the swedish have have a very good work plan they know that they don't have individual stars in them they are relying on collective effort and their strength is their defensive and the collective effort i think uh, new uh, switzerland also has like shakiri uh, who is going to make a difference in the attacking line and i think it's going to be a nice game to watch because we have two european countries yes uh, vying for a spot in the quarters So I think it will make it more interesting for us. Uh, that's all the time we have in this show. Goodbye.